Welcome back to Mac Break Studio here in Pescott, Arizona, in my living room with Mark Spencer. And we're going to look at some really cool effects that he's um, been playing with. We're going to create a dark and stormy night out of nothing. Out of nothing. Out of nothing, yeah. Is it dark and stormy night? Is, is that a reference to something? It may be. It may okay, be. all right. Now, I was originally building this in motion, I was doing a motion tutorial, but I discovered it was actually easier to do in Final Cut Pro. So this is a little bit of compositing and animation in Final Cut based on some things that are built into Final Cut that made this go much faster than it would have been in motion. It uses motion because all of the titles, transitions, effects, and generators in Final Cut come from motion, but it's all done right in Final Cut. So right. uh, let's take a look here, okay? Mm -hmm. So I have uh, this, this shot here, this very scary girl in a scary place, and I need an establishing shot to get into. So I've got a little horror movie going on, right? But I need an establishing shot of the outside. So I need a, a, a scary house at night in the rain. So <laughs> I went to some stock photos. This happens to be from Pond 5. And uh, I found this house and I found this interior, neither of which look particularly scary. They're not at night and it's not raining but we're gonna make it work. So that's the whole idea, is how you can take some stock photography. By the way, these two together cost $13. Um, <laughs> I bought them, but we're gonna create something out of them. So the first thing I wanna mention is, you know, when you add a still to the timeline, I don't know if you find yourself needing to do this, but constantly going into the inspector and changing the default fit to constantly, fill. Constantly, yeah. Because aspect ratio doesn't match, match, so it'll be a pillar box or letter box. So guess what? You can make that change in the browser before you bring it in the timeline. And you can do it on a bunch of them at once. A bunch at once. So I'm going to select both of these. You could select all your pictures by selecting the stills smart collection. Uh, select them. And in the inspector, I'm going to change the spatial conform to fill. And now when I add these to the project with E they will already fill the screen. Oh, that's way better. Now, you may want to change their position in, these, in this case in Y. We've got a little extra room in Y, so I can show a little bit of that grass there. And for this shot, we could also move it up and down to reframe it a little bit, but we don't need to make that change. So one little thing there. I'm also gonna change the duration. I'll select them both, Control D, six period, and make them six seconds long each, which is, I think, about how long I want. So It's a long establishing shot. Uh, well, there's a lot. There's a lot going on, and it's and there's going to be a lot of buildup. Right. So it's it's important to set the suspense, build the suspense here. So the first thing I'm going to do here is hide the browser, Control Command One, to give us a little more space, and I'm going to go to our effects browser. I'm going to get some effects. So Command Five brings up that effects browser, and I'm going to search for search here rain. And right away, we get some rain, film grain. <laughs> film grain. <laughs> Almost, but we get rain. So with this cl clip selected, I'll tap C to select it. I'll just double click, and we immediately have some pretty convincing rain. <laughs> Not only that, Did it's, it change? It looks like it changed yeah, the, it did. the, it, the uh, tonality of yeah, it. Yeah, so I'm going to make the rain go straight down, because I just think it's a little more um, evil somehow to have <laughs> Straight rain, down rain. Yeah, straight down rain. And we can adjust the amount here. I want to crank it up quite a bit. And we've got, sure, high quality. Why not? Oh, no, that I don't like that. It's, it's a little a shower. Too, yeah, that looks a little crazy. The density of the rain, um, maybe drop it down a little bit. The colorize, that's what added that color. I really kind of like that, so yeah, I'm going to use that. Yeah. And the brightness of the rain, I don't want it too bright. Yeah. I want everything to be, be kind of dismal. So um, one quick shot, we've got some nice rain going on our scene, and we've made it darker. It kind of looks not like midday anymore, but right. a little more towards evening anyway. So now I want to make it look more like night than it does now. So I'll go ahead and type night in my search field here. And look at that, day into night. What do you know? I'll double click on that, and immediately it looks even darker. Now, the effect stacking order is important. It, it can have an effect depending on what the effects are doing. So I'm gonna try this dragging this above the rain and that way the rain shows up a little better Yeah. while we still get that nice darkness here. So we can drop the amount down. We can match iMovie. So there's a, <laughs> a similar iMovie effect that we could choose to match to, but we don't care about that. I'm gonna yeah. keep that off. And there's protect skin. If there were skin here, it actually looks like it's protecting the house <laughs> a little bit there and we can change the brightness. But overall, we can very quickly create kind of a, a dark, dismal, rainy scene yeah. uh, out, of, out of a still photo. Let's take it a little bit further, though. I'm going to add a color correction, Command-6, to 
go to the color corrector and I'll just use the uh, color wheels to do this. I'm going to make it a little darker by bringing down my highlights and maybe even my midtones a little bit. My black's already nice and low. And I'll even move it a little more towards the bluer side on the master wheel to really give it a dark, dismal feel. So I've got my basic setup there, but I'd love to put in some, uh, some thunder and lightning. So for this, I'm going to go back into my effects browser, and this time I'm going to go down to effects, to light, and let's turn off our search field there. We'll cancel that there. And if I scroll down here, we have one called flashing that's kind of cool. So this time I'll drag it on here. And if I play that, it has this lightning like effect. That's actually pretty freaking it's, it's, cool. It's not bad, right? It's not, it's not but I don't, I don't want it doing it right away. I right. want that lightning to kick in a little bit later. So, but it, it doesn't have any controls. If we go back to the video inspector and we looked at it, there's just intensity. And I like the full intensity. I've tried dragging it down. I don't like it. So, but I don't want it to happen over the full range. And you think, oh, I'll blade the clip and I'll take the effect off, you know, the first part of it. But a better way, I think, is control V to show the animation parameters here. There's my flashing intensity and I'll reveal it, and there's a bar here. Now, you could set keyframes by holding the option key and clicking, but right. I'll press down R, and I'll create a range over the time I want that flashing to happen, and then I'll drag down, oops, actually I want to do the opposite. I don't want to drag that down, I want to drag these others down. Yeah. <laughs> so that it, it starts a little later. So we don't get any flashing right away, but it flashes for a little while, and then it stops. So let's close that down and try that out. There's, yeah, that's so it comes a little later, flashes a few times and goes away. So you can't really control when it flashes, you know, how many flashes you're going to get, but you control when, turn it on when and off. And, yeah, duration. yeah, and in fact, if you don't like that middle flash, you can go in and just get rid of that little piece in the middle, like, hey, I, I want you to stop flashing right in this part right here. Um, so let's try a little range trick again, a little range there and drag, say, no, no flashing right there. Okay, so we've up and down and gives us some control over that. I think that's a great little tip. A little flashing, stops oh. again a little more. Okay, so great. Let's add some sound to kind of round that out now. So what I'm going to do is go back to the browser here and into the sound and photos here. And under sound effects, I'm just going to search for thunder. And we've got lots of different thunder options here. Rain, heavy thunder. I like that right away. So I don't just want to add it because it's 34 seconds long. I know this is six seconds long. So I'm going to press X to select that range and then Q so that it comes in just the right duration. And I can, you know, make the end fade out later. I don't care too much about that. It's not bad, but I like a little bit more thunder happening right about you know, when we see the lightning flash. Yeah. So, it, meaning that it's right on us. Right. Right, it's right on it's us. So there's clap. a thunderclap, sure. So I'll select that guy. At this time I will do a cue without setting a range first, but I'll just have this thing end. I'll select it. In fact, a fast way to select it is command down arrow. Mm -hmm. We'll go down, select it, option right bracket to trim it. And then maybe we add one more. I'll just option drag another one out here. And this is really a temp mix because in a future Mac break, we're going to make a, a full sound score to this little opening in Logic. Nice. This kind of gives us a setup here. So let's play that through. It's not exactly matching, but... It's no, but it's close. I could yeah. put it in. I want it to happen a little after because there's going to be delay after right. the lightning to hear the thunder. That's true. Back it up a little bit. Now, to round this out, what I want to do is make a little push on this, a little move. Let's hide the browser there to make this viewer bigger. And I'll hit Shift C for the crop tool and select Ken Burns. And by default, it's going to pull out, but I want to push in because I want to push into what's dangerous here. So I'll reverse the Ken Burns and then I'll take the start and I'll drag it down. So we're pushing into the house and take a look at that. You're pulling away from the house. Oh man, I must have, I thought I, uh, I must have reversed it. Well, it's easy to switch. There we go. <laughs> easy. Easy, easy to fix. switch. Yep, yep. So what's in this scary place? 
So pretty quickly, we've taken a still photo and with a couple of built-in effects in Final Cut and some sound effects built in Final Cut made, you know, pretty convincing little establishing shot for what's to come to follow. Yeah. Now, I'm not going to break down the whole thing I did on the second part, but I'll give you a basic idea of it. Um, so what I did there, I'll open up a, a finished version of it here. And... I took what we saw was a simple still photo and turned it into this. Let's play back from a little bit before. Yeah, that's great. So, and what you can see, this is a compound clip and you can see on it, I have something called a firelight, which is actually a little, I quickly made a plug-in in motion to have some flickering light. Mm -hmm. So I just made some flickering light in motion to take care of that. And there's also something called intro flashes, which is built into Final Cut. And I did a color correction. The reason this is a compound clip, if I double click on it, uh, there's two compound clips inside of it. And each one, if I toggle their visibility on and off, I needed to make the outside darker. Got it. So I used the color board with a mask just to correct and, and darken it. And the other thing I did, I added on something called water paint, which is another built-in effect in Final Cut. And if I play, you'll see that uh, there's streaks of water running down here. Oh yeah, you see the streaks? Yeah, maybe I'll turn off, I'll turn th this effect off on this one just so you can see it a little more clearly. i turn the color board off and it looks like there's streaks oh, of I water. Can, yeah, you can see the water, yeah. yeah. So that's another effect in Final Cut and I just used that effect, you know, every effect has masks yeah. built in so you can see that that water paint effect uh, has a mask on it, restricting it to just that area. Yeah, it's going to... Okay? okay. And in inside each of those are the original source clips. So there's two compound clips. Uh, with a couple of masks and a little bit of color correction and a couple of the built-in effects to create a, a quick opening uh, establishing of both the outside of the house. I think have the turned off here, right? Yeah. Oh. And the, yeah, I had left that turned off. So, but you get the idea. Yeah. So um, this is what I love about Final Cut. It has, even though motion is extremely powerful, because so much of motion is built into Final Cut, you can do a lot of compositing and even sound design, you know, right in Final Cut with the built-in elements. Yeah, that's fantastic. Awesome. So yeah, a lot of the effects in there are right there for your Yep, perusal. it just takes a little digging and playing around with them. Right. So we're going to do part two next? We'll do part two next. It might, yeah. We might publish it in a week or two, but... Yeah, yeah. and you want to check out... What, you want to definitely check out Mark's Warp Speed Effects tutorial that we have in our library where he covers a, a lot of this stuff that works very, very quickly so you can work fast in that. So, thanks for watching another episode of Mac Week Studio. We'll see you next week.